We are pleased to be joined uh, today by tournament host Tiger Woods, as well as Dr. Pavan Munjal, Chairman, CEO, Hero Moto Corp. Dr. Munjal, I'll start with you today. After a year away from the tournament due to the pandemic, can you share what you're most looking forward to as the Hero World Challenge returns to Albany this week? Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And good morning to, to all of you here at the Hero World Challenge at Albany. And a very, very warm welcome once again after a gap of one year. You're back here after two years, in fact. I'm personally thrilled to be back here this morning amongst all of you. And more importantly, once again, sitting here with my friend, Tiger, after many, many months. It's always, it's always bliss for, for me and for all of us from Hero to come back here at Albany for the Hero World Challenge. It's always a treat to be amongst friends with Tiger and the 20 other fortunate pros who get to play the Hero World Challenge. A very unique event, a very different golf event, a fun event, yet part of the PGA Tour. I don't want to talk too much about the pandemic. We've all been talking about it for so many months. A new talk now since the last couple of days, a new strain, but life has to go on. One of my friends here was just saying, we are lucky that we play outdoors. We are not bowling. We wouldn't be allowed to do that then. From that point of view, God has been kind to us, to this game. All of you are playing again. All the tours are playing. The pros are back on the courses. Now, this week, let's all have fun. Let's have a treat here at Albany. Let's enjoy Bahamas. And let's watch the best of golf on this beautiful golf course here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Munjal. Tiger, it's great to see you looking healthy. Seems mm -hmm. like the recovery is progressing nicely. Uh, can you share what it means to you to be back here hosting at Albany for the sixth time after a year off last year? Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a long 22 months for all of us uh, not being able to play last year. We completely understand the reasons why with the pandemic, um, trying to keep everyone safe, and it was uh, the right call. But it's exciting to have it this week. You know, this is our sixth time here, uh, seventh time with uh, Hero Motor Corp. So we're excited about that and our future with them. Um, the, look at the field this year, the strongest we've ever had. Um, it's been it's incredible. The players that have shown up, I think there's eight new players this, this, year, uh, this week that um, are being introduced to the, this format and this event. Um, a lot of the players who, were, who have been first-timers that have come from this event have started new charities or new foundations from what they've learned here at this event. So we're very proud of that. Um, some have expanded on what they've been doing uh, in their own charities and their own foundations uh, from what they've learned at, at this event. So uh, hopefully that, that trend continues. Uh, we have a great week weather-wise. Uh, course is immaculate. So it's going to be a lot of fun this week. Recently, your foundation celebrated its 25th anniversary mm -hmm. and reached more than 2 million students served through its educational programs. Can you share how important this week is to the TGR Foundation? Yeah, just a couple of months ago, we reached uh, 25 years of, of doing this and serving the under, under youth kids uh, in the United States and around the world. Uh, we've reached 2 million kids either through our, um, our different various platforms, but uh, we continue to push our STEM programs. We continue to push um, our reach and how far we can and how many, how many kids we can serve. There's some, so much potential out there. Um, if they have access and accessibility is something that um, not everyone has, and especially it has unfortunately dramatically shown its ugly head during this pandemic, the, the haves and have nots, and you've seen students you know, fall back an entire grade. So uh, we want to uh, make up that, ga that gap, and uh, we have uh, some great plans for the future of that. 
and uh, working with other companies uh, in other states to make that uh, make that happen. All right, now we'll take some questions from media that we have in the room with us. We've got a couple <coughs> microphone holders. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Um, we'll start right here with Dylan DeChair, golf.com, please. Hey, Tiger, welcome back. Um, the Hero has served as a place where you've staged comebacks before, uh, or, or comeback from injuries, surgeries, various different things. I'm just wondering this year how different you feel compared to, you know, coming back from other surgeries or injuries in the past. Well, I, I've hosted this event, unfortunately, not as a player, you know, in the field. And this year is, is one of them. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun watching the guys, you know, come here and play and tee it up and you know, be out there. I miss, because I've been away from the game for, call it an entire year. Um, I just miss the, the, the jabbing, the, the needling, and, you know, how's everyone doing? And, I mean, there's only so much you can do via text and, um, and phone calls. You know, a lot happens. And we get caught up a lot out here on tour in, in locker rooms and having dinners and, and off-site stuff like that. So um, to be able to catch up with the guys this week, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun. I haven't seen majority of them uh, you know, since February. Uh, some have come over to the house. Some, most of them have texted me, you know, over, over that period of time but I haven't physically seen a lot of them. So it would be nice to catch up. Steve DiMeglio. Eric, can I ask a couple? Um, you've been down this road before on recovery. How much more difficult has this one been? Yeah, this one's been much more difficult. Uh, the, 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 back, the knee stuff that I had on my left knee, those, those operations were, I guess, one thing. Then that's one level. Then you had the back. That's another level. And then with this... Uh, with this right leg, that was, uh, it's, it's hard to explain how difficult it's been. Uh, just to be immobile for you know, three months and just lay there and you know, I was just looking forward to just getting outside. Uh, that was you know, a, a goal of mine. And uh, especially for a person who has lived his entire life outside, um, that, was, that was a goal. And uh, finally got to that point, uh, went transition from wheelchair to crutches to now nothing. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work. I, I'm very thankful to all the surgeons and, and especially the, the nurses who are the unsung heroes through all of it, uh, who were there you know, by my bed and kept my, my spirits up, all my friends and family. Uh, there were some tough times in there. There were some really, really tough times and pain got, got pretty great at times, but um, they helped me get through it and uh, I'm on the better side of it, but I still got a long way to go. And oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Steve. And is it too early to have a target tournament to zero in on, like the, the PNC or Augusta or well, the Open? I'll, I'll put you this way: as far as playing at the tour level, that, I, I don't know when that's going to happen. Now I'll play around here and there, um, a little hit and giggle. I can I can do something like that. It. I certainly like playing from, you know. We, uh, the USGA suggests, you know, play forward. I really like that idea now. <laughs> I, I don't like the, I don't like the, the tees on back. So I like play it forward. Come on, let's move it up. Let's move it up. Um, yeah, I've, to see some of my shots uh, fall out of the sky a lot shorter than they used to is a little eye-opening. Um, but uh, at least I'm able to do it again. That's something that for a while there did. It didn't look like I was going to. Um, I'm able to participate in the sport of golf. Now, to what level, I do not know that. And, you know, I'll keep you abreast of all of you guys abreast as progress go continues to go on. Whether or not I'll be out here and, um, and at what level and, and when. All right, we'll go right down the line here, starting with Mark Canizaro. Hey, Tiger. Um, I'm wondering what you remember of the accident. Obviously, we all saw the result, and it looked so uh, horrifying and scary. Uh, that I, and I have a follow-up to that. Yeah, all those answers have been been answered in the investigation. So we can read about all that there in the post report. And can you speak about what some of the most uh, difficult moments were for these in these last ten or eleven months for you? I mean, you, you've, you've skimmed on it a little bit, but were there what, what were some of the times that were most difficult? Well, I think that it's just laying there, I'm laying still, and I've been. I, I was in the hospital for only three weeks. But I was in a hospital bed for three months. So that in itself is difficult. 
um, being assisted everywhere I go, um, not being able to, to move anywhere. Uh, as I said, just looking forward to just getting outside. You know, eventually I got to a point where they could wheelchair me outside safely and I could feel the sun. You know, that was like a, that was a milestone. You know, the, it, it's little things like that that added up. And then eventually when I started crutching around the house, I'd never, you know, I, <laughs> I built a really nice house, but I didn't realize how big it was until you started putting crutches on. <laughs> um, yeah, there were times where I had to take breaks. But I tell you what, though, there's a point in time where my triceps got pretty jacked. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, but as, as a whole, it's, it's been a tough at times, yes. Um, some dark moments. But then again, as I was making progress through it, too, you know, I could see some light. And that was giving me hope. Um, I'm able to participate more with my kids and their activities um, and more and just in life in general. So it's, it's I'm on that side, as I said, I'm on the positive side. I had a, a couple of quick ones, Tiger. First of all, um, do you recall the day you first walked without crutches? Say again? The, the day you first walked without uh, help, without crutches? or It was probably about uh, two months after the accident. No, two months after the accident, before I walked with crutches. I was in a wheelchair. I, I, don't know, I, I meant when the first time you were able to walk like you did coming into this room without... Oh, without? Yeah, that's what I meant. Well, I did it probably maybe a little earlier than they suggested. <laughs> and, and secondly, you've had, I've lost track, nine, ten surgeries before this. Um, I had ten knee, ten, oh, sorry, five knee, five back, so ten. Even, even ten. None of them involved the kind of trauma, the kind of... Um, uh, adrenaline-induced fear that, that this one involved, and I, I'm just curious if you ever have any any flashbacks to that. Do you ever think about it? Do you ever have any any memories, anything like that? I don't. No, I'm very lucky in that way. Final fusion surgery. <clears throat> you need <clears throat> you needed to climb Mount Everest again, and then yesterday you said that you don't really. That you might not have the body to do that. What has that shift been like for you? mentally and, and personally well I've I've made the climb up there a few times and I've had a, a pretty good run in, in my career and uh, I, I just knew that once I came back from the spinal fusion surgery I still had my hands um, the only thing that was holding me back was my back and once I realized that, that was good and it was solid it wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna have the zinging down my leg it wasn't gonna have the drop foot anymore um, you know, I wasn't going to have any of those issues. Okay, well, can I make a swing? Yes. Ooh, I have power. Didn't think I'd have power. Um, all of a sudden, I would play at home and I would shoot scores. Um, not the 77s and the 78s, and they were in the mid-60s without really trying. I'm like, okay, this is new. Um, let's, you know, let's see if we, we can, you know, push this a little bit further. So I came back here. Um in 2017 and played in the, in the hero event um, and took full advantage of all, of all the players in the field and their world ranking points. Because <laughs> I think it was, I was 1299 at the time. So I uh, was able to climb in the world rankings because of that. And then I started back in 18 and started playing a little bit more and I started building. And once I started building, I realized that after Tampa that I could win. Okay. None, then I proved to myself that I could take the lead in the British Open. Okay, well, I could close, even though I did not win, I closed pretty good at the PGA at Belle Reve. And then 19, I won the Masters. Okay, well, I, I don't see that type of trend going forward for me. I won't have the opportunity to practice, in, given the condition of my leg, um, and build up. I, I just don't. So I mean, it's going to have to be a different way of doing it. Um, and that's okay, and I'm at peace with that. I've, I've made the climb enough times. And then just one quick one. Have you played golf holes, like a full hole or 18 holes since the Yeah, I've played full holes, yeah, but not for my team markers. Okay. Next question from you and Murray. Hi, Tiger. You've spoken then again there about your career being different and being reduced and, and probably mm -hmm. curtailed. But this is because of an accident and because of injury. It's not because you reached 75 years old. Is that easy for you to, to compute in your mind, or is it difficult that you're going to be 
stopped or, or pulled back because of no, it's, external it's factors? It's very easy given the fact that I was able to come back after uh, the, the, fin the fusion surgery and do what I did. You know, I, I got that I got that last major, you know, and I, I ticked off two more events along the way. So, um, you know, I, I don't I don't foresee this leg ever being with what it used to be. Hence, I'll never have the back what it used to be. And clock's ticking. I'm getting older. I'm not getting any younger. So, um, all that combined means that uh, a full schedule and full practice schedule and the recovery that it would take to do that. Um, no, I don't have any desire to do that. But to ramp up for a few events a year, uh, as I alluded to yesterday, like Mr. Hogan did, uh, he did a pretty good, pretty good job of it. And there's no reason why I can't, I can't do that and feel ready. I may not be tournament sharp in the sense of the hand played tournaments, but I think it's, if you practice correctly and you do it correctly, that I've come off surgeries before, I've come off long layoffs, and I've won or I've come close to winning before. So uh, I know the recipe for it. I just got to get to a point where I feel comfortable enough where I can do that again. Uh, I, I have one question for Mr. Munjal and one question for uh, Tiger. Uh, let me start with Mr. Munjal. Mr. Munjal, you have been friend with Tiger for a long time and you have known him for a long time. What is the one character trait in him that, that you really admire? That's a, a tough one though. But clearly, his resilience and desire to come back, fight back. Tiger, I wanted to ask you, speaking to so many people before this tournament and even, you know, before when you were playing in your heydays, if I would ask someone that, what do you think of Tiger at a major? 90% of them would say that he would win. Now when I ask people, more than 80-85% of them still think that you will be able to come back and win a major. What does that kind of expectation mean to you? I mean, and do you feel a little afraid that you might let down almost billions of people, of your fans, if you don't do that? Well, I think it's, it's awfully flattering that, that people think that highly of my game. You know, I think I've, I've proven that I can play this game at a high level for a long period of time. And... It's awfully flattering that they think that I can come back um, from this and win tournaments and, as you said, win, win major championships. Uh, for that to happen, I have a long way to go. I mean, I have a long way in the rehab process of this leg, and, um, and it's not the fun stuff of, of the rehab. You know, it's, it's just reps and, you know, breaking up scar tissue and things that, that really hurt. Um, so that part of it's not going to be fun, but the challenge of it is, you know, I enjoy the challenge of, of getting in there and trying to push it to the next level. Sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back, but you got to go through it. Um, I enjoy that part of it. And um, maybe one day that it'll be good enough where I can get out here and I can compete against these, these best players in the world again. We'll take two in the, in the back right over there, starting with Bernie. Tiger, okay, good to see you again at the golf tournament. Thanks, um, Bernie. I'm going to ask you, are you in any pain sitting in there now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't want to get too personal, but what, you know what? What is what are you experiencing there at the moment, sitting there? Uh, my back hurts and my leg hurts. Yeah. And can, and can I ask you? You probably answered this question a little bit already this morning. But what gets you through these dark patches you've had in your sort of in your life? What what is what does it say about your your character? Well, it's it's having a great support system, great friends, great people around me um, that are positive and upbeat. Um, but it's also the unfortunate part, experience. I've gone through tough procedures before in the past and then been sidelined and have had to recover. And having that past experience has, has helped. Um, and just understanding the patience of timelines. You know, then when someone says that, like when I blew out my ACL and broke my leg, it was, you know, you're out for nine months. Well, that's kind of a bummer, you know, in nine, nine months without it coming back to, to sport. Okay, well, you know, then back fusion surgeries, uh, knee operations, and all those different timelines. Just understanding that the, having the patience, you know, within those timelines, um, how much can we push and how much we can't push. You know, that, that's, 
you have to push until it hurts, but then you can't go overboard. You know, that, that's the hard part. But I've had so much experience in that regard that, yeah, I know. Okay, well, okay, we've taken it a little too far. Let's pump the brakes. We'll stop it right here. Okay, you haven't pushed me enough. Now, this is a good day. Let's continue to go. Uh, good to have you back, Tiger. Yeah. Uh, good to have you back. And one question for Tiger and one for Dr. Munjal. Tiger, you've often spoken about your children, Sam and Charlie, for whom you want to play golf or to be able to play golf with them, uh, Charlie in particular. This is the first time that uh, they are seeing you go through what you're going through right now. Before that, they were far too young. So, like, what's been their reaction and the way you're trying to kind of get back to the golf course, especially for Charlie? Well, they've, they have known me, you know, more for being injured than healthy. You know, most of their, their lives, I was going through my back operations. So, you know, I was the guy sitting in the chair right in front of the TV playing Call of Duty while they're at school. And I just had to sit there and let it heal. And so they would play around me. They were so little. Um, it was a surprise to them. Then they realized that I could play the game. Um, so... That's why the, the Masters was such an important family moment for all of us, for my mom, um, Sam and Charlie, um, and all my friends, because it was, that's, that's what they've seen. That's what they've grown up with. They don't remember any of the other times because they weren't alive yet or they're too young to remember. Um, so you know, in this case, it's like, huh, back to normal again. Dad's not able to move. And so... Uh, Little things like that, to be able to, to, be able to go out there and, and do activities now with them, uh, to watch my daughter play her soccer games and Charlie to play, play tournaments and, and to talk to them about it and to see them grow up and, and hear the verbiage that has changed, you know, as kids grow up. Yeah. Um, a little bit of an eye-opener at times to hear the words that come out. Um, I'm definitely not in the know on a lot of... A lot of things. I'm not the, you know, the hip, cool dad at times. Uh, so I'm trying to keep up with that. The, the lingo changes very quickly. So I'm trying to keep up. Dr. Mitchell, so you've known Tiger now for seven years. You joined hands with him at a very crucial stage, you know, when, you know, a lot of people were thinking whether Tiger's going to be Tiger once again. He did. In this last, um, say, 10 months or eight months since February, what's the kind of interaction have you had? And... What kind of expectations or hopes that you had for him, and how have they been? I've been interacting with Tiger on, mm -hmm. on messages, talking to him off and on. Clearly, we all know what, what happened and, and what he's been going through. And I know, I understand, like you do. And to come back from, from this kind of an injury, this type of an accident, is something which is not impossible, but very, very difficult and very tough. As I just said, that one trait in Tiger that I best admire is his, his comeback, his resilience, and to fight back. Having said that, my only hope has been that he gets well, gets better, be with his family, and keep doing the good work through his foundation that he's been doing. And I've said this in the past that my association or hero's association with Tiger is not around his current game or his current form. It is because what he's done in the past for the game, through the foundation, or sports in general, that's what I admire and that's why the connect. Tiger, I know you said earlier that it's difficult <coughs> to put a, a, a timeline on a return, but an event like the 150th Open at St Andrews next year, given your history with the Open, your history with St Andrews, how much would that be an event you would like to, to be ready for? Yeah, I would love, I would love to play <clears throat> at St Andrews. There's no doubt about it. It's my favourite golf course in the world. And... Uh, to be a, a two-time Open champion there, uh, I would like just like to uh, this just even being a part of the champions dinner is is really neat. Um, <clears throat> from my first one in, in 05 was my first one I got to attend the champions dinner. 
it was pretty neat to to be a part of it. And, and the, you know, Peter Thompson was still alive, and I sat right next to him and to hear him tell the stories of when he came over and he played and shots he played and where he won, how he did it. It was awesome. You know, those are things like like at like at the Masters. You, you just those dinners are, are are priceless, and those stories and listen to them. Uh, talk about how they played and when they played it and what they did and um, it's just an honor to be a part of a room like that and yes I would love to be able to play that open championship yeah, there's no doubt about it and this uh, physically and hopefully I can't uh, I get I gotta get there first okay I, the tournament's not gonna go anywhere but I need to get there Steve Tiger your uh, 46 is coming up in 30 days is yeah, that thanks. still thanks, a man. thanks is that still a day you look forward to, or is it just another day, or how do you approach your <clears throat> one more year around the globe? Well, four more years, I'm in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's um, this year has been uh, a year with, I like to turn the, turn the page on. And, uh, you know, it's been full of uh, some, some tough memories and some tough times, but also some great times too as well. But again, it, it would be nice to turn the page. Doug? I had a couple more things, Tiger. Best case scenario in, in the process of your recovery, and you can play um, pick and choose limited tournaments a year. Are, are you, how determined are you to win again? Well, I got to be good enough to do it. Okay, so I got to prove to myself in practice that, that I'm, I'm good enough. I, yeah, I'll chip and putt any of these guys, but the golf courses are longer than just a chip and putt course. Okay, um, we're not going to be playing the par three course at Augusta, you know, to win the Masters. So uh, I got to get a, a little bit bigger game than that. So I got, as I said, I got a long way to go in my in the rehab process to be able to do something like that. Did you just commit to the par three? No, I committed to that. I can play courses of that length. I got you. <laughs> now, if a tour wants to not have golf courses lengthen, they shorten up that much to make it more difficult, and that's fine by me. I have no problem with that. They want to go back to wooden shafts and feathery balls. Okay, I'm cool. And just a couple more that might be uh, not that easy for you to answer, but even oh. even playing a, a limited schedule, if at all, <clears throat> or not playing. What is your value? Do you think to the tour? What can you still bring to the to the tour? Just being who you are and what you've done. Well, I think that I I host the Genesis event. I host this event here, the, the Hero uh, World Challenge, and I think that. This, those two events alone is a lot. Um, I'm a friends with majority of the players that are a top of the world rankings, and they text, call, FaceTime, uh, do a bunch of different things, and I can still be a part of the tour, yes, um, even though I'm not playing in it. And, and then lastly for me, uh, and this was going on way before the accident, but this, this push toward a new league and... Uh, or various new leagues, and it made me curious if a player came to you for advice on whether they should uh, join Greg Norman's league or whatever he's got going, what, what would you tell him? Well, it's going to be his his decision, period. Um, I have decided for myself that I'm supporting the PGA Tour, and that's where my legacy is. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have won 82 events on this tour and 15 major championships and been a part of the, the World Golf Championships. Um, the start of them and the end of them. So uh, I, I have an allegiance to the PGA Tour, and um, I understand that some of the comparisons are, is, a, is a very similar to when Arnold and Jack broke off from the PGA of America to start the tour. Um, I don't see it that way. Um, I think the tour has done a fantastic job. Jay's done an unbelievable job in a very difficult time uh, during the pandemic you know, when we had, uh, there was ample opportunity for players to leave. Uh, but we were the first term, we we're first sporting, uh, sporting tour to to start. So, uh, with that, yes, did we have some protocol issues at times? Yes, we had to learn on the fly. But um, Jay and the staff have done an incredible job of, of that. And so, um, I think the tour is in great hands. And they're doing fantastic, and uh, prize money is going up. Um, it, it's just, it's just not guaranteed money for like you know. Most sports are. Um, it's just like tennis. You got to go out there and earn it. Mark, Tiger. Um, I think over the last 
a bit of time. We've seen you kind of humbled by getting through the back surgery and being able to make that comeback that you did and whatnot. I'm just curious, when you got on the other side of, of the surgeries and all the stuff that went on in February, uh, and you realized the depth, you probably saw the pictures and one of, of how bad the accident was, did you feel lucky to be alive? And, and is that part of why you're kind of at peace, you know, as you speak to us now about going yeah, forward? Yeah, I mean, I said it yesterday. I feel I'm lucky to be alive, but also still had the limb. Um, that, those are two crucial things, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very grateful that uh, someone upstairs was, was taking care of me, that uh, I'm able to not only be here, but also to walk without a prosthesis. Daniel? How realistic was amputation as an option? What's that? How realistic was amputation? Like, was that really Yeah, it was, on the, it was on the table. And my other question is, um, if, sorry. Um, I, I forgot. All right, uh, Brian on the right. Tiger, 25 years of the foundation. Where am I looking? Sorry. Right, right over here. Yep. Also, 25 years since the 97 Masters. How do you look back at that event differently okay. now than you did when you won it 25 years ago? Yeah. It, it, our, our foundation work, my dad and I started the foundation 25 years ago. Um, I won the Masters there 25 years ago, and also... You know, it's sad to say, but uh, Lee Elder just passed, and he was there at the back of the green um, when I won my first Masters 25 years ago. Uh, when he competed and played in his first Masters, that was the year I was born. So um, it, 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 those 25 years have gone by in blink, um, but those are, you know, three significant moments that, that happened, you know, all at once uh, within the same year. Yeah, I remember now. Sorry okay. about that. Um, you, you seem determined to, <clears throat> if, <clears throat> if physically possible, to, to play again. Was there ever a moment where you thought, is this, is this all worth it again? Do I want to put myself and, and my family through all this? Or were you always determined to, if physically possible, try to play at least a limited schedule? Well, you made, you made a great, great, great point. You know, is it, am I going to put my family through it again? Am I going to put myself out there again? And... We had a talk within the family, you know, all of us sat down and said, you know, it's, if this leg cooperates and I get to a point where I can play the tour, is it okay with you guys if I try and do it? And the consensus was yes. Now, internally, I haven't reached that point. Um, I haven't proven it to myself that I can do it. Yeah, I can show up here and I can host an event. I can play a, a part three course. I hit, hit a few shots. I can chip and putt. But... Okay, now we're talking about going out there and playing against the world's best on the, on the most difficult golf courses under the most difficult conditions. I'm so far from that. Now, I have a long way to go to get to that point. Now, I haven't decided whether or not I want to get to that point. Um, I got to get my leg to a point where that decision can be made. Um, and we'll see what happens when, when I get to that point. But I got a long way to go with this leg. Yeah, you were talking to Henny in that uh, interview that came out yesterday, just about the little things um, that give you joy in the, the game of golf. And I was just wondering if that helped you get through, like, the joy of a well-struck golf ball oh, and putt and yes. chip. Yes, it, it did. Well, if my, um, they wanted me to go out there and hit a few putts, but I had, had a boot on. I mean, that doesn't do any good. You know, I have a boot that tilts, and it's not, it's not the same as putting, okay? Well, yeah, you're outside. And, yeah, I did crutch outside, and I would lay out there on the grass and just feel the sun because I've been inside for so long. Um, had to work on my tan. So uh, it was nice to finally get the boot off and then hit a few putts. But then after hitting a few putts, I realized that, damn, that ball's a long way down there. I, I can't get it out of the hole. So I had uh, uh, Matthew, you know, uh, who works for me out back, I said, dude, no more holes, just sand field holes. I, I can't bend down that far. So, you know, little adjustments like that. But to be able to go out there and, and hit Old Faithful and, and feel the, the memories in that, in that putter 
and then get to a point where I could hit chip shots, and then I realized, oh, I could hit that shot, I could hit that shot, let me try and hit this one. And then my hands and feel started coming back, but then the aches and pains started coming, so, you know, back to the ice bath again. So it would be one of those things where it, I don't have the endurance to, to stay out there for long periods of time. But the fact that I'm able to do it is exciting because um, there was a period in time where it didn't look like I was going to be able to do it again. And then uh, when it comes to the, the day of the crash, clearly that's something that, that you're hoping to keep private. Is, is that something that you feel like is, is sort of your business and, and not the rest of ours, for lack of a better phrase? Well, I kind of feel like that way most of my life. It doesn't really work out that way. Um, I understand that it's, uh, I had friends that insulated me from, from a lot of the, the, the things that were said outside. You know, I didn't, I didn't have my phone. I didn't have, you know, access. I, well, I did have access to TV and I was just watching sports. Um, but I refused to turn on the, you know, local channels and news and stuff like that. You know, I, I didn't want to go down that road. I wasn't mentally ready for that road yet. Um. A lot of things in my body hurt at that time and uh, whether I was on medication or not it still hurt and uh, just trying to imagine me coming off of that stuff how much it was gonna hurt um, I didn't want to have my mind go there yet it wasn't ready so yeah people are gonna poke and prod and want to know more about my business um, I understand that and um, this as long as they're going to go into my they can poke and prod at me all they want just uh, stay away from my family our final question here, right in the middle. Hi, Tiger. Uh, you expressed your uh, body pain before. And Sorry, can't hear you. Speak up a little bit. Yeah, you expressed your body pain before. Could you express your mind feelings? And in the meantime, uh, could you ask, explain to us the goal of your foundation for the future? My goal and my motivation for the future is to, right now, it's short term. It's not long term. It's trying to get my leg good. Um, we're working with, you know, Hero right now this week. We're trying to grow, grow the foundation. We're expanding it, trying to help more youths. You know, right, right now we're at 2 million youths served. Um, that number, I think, is a little bit low, and I think we can do more, and we're working on other programs and um, other things that are going to be drastically different uh, just because of the new platforms that are available to us um, and some of the different directions kids want to take. You know, they, some just don't want to go to, to, to college. They want to have access to the workplace. Well, we have plenty of CEOs and, and plenty of people we know that, that can get them um, interest to uh, to uh, interview. So let's let's help them with that. So, yeah, so there's there's a lot of immediate stuff that I have been working on with, on with the foundation, not having been thinking a lot of long-term golf stuff, um, just because I need to work on the short term and get this leg right uh, before I can even you know, put my mind there. All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you, Tiger, and thank you, Dr. Mujal. Thank you.